Remember those old sci-fi movies where the world's a total mess? Cities overflowing, people rioting over scraps of food, the planet basically one giant trash heap? Well, in the 1960s, a scientist named Paul Ehrlich wasn't just writing about that future. He predicted it was practically right around the corner. His book, The Population Bomb, was like the ultimate doomsday prophecy. Ehrlich's thing was this, too many people, not enough food, we're all doomed. He figured mass starvation would be the new normal by the 1970s. You can imagine, this caused a whole lot of panic. People freaked about having kids, governments started considering some pretty extreme population control measures. It got intense, but thing is, here we are decades later. Did those famines ever happen? Was Ehrlich a brilliant thinker who saw the crisis no one else did? Or was he just crying wolf, stirring up unnecessary fear and oversimplifying a seriously complex issue? That's what we're unpacking today. The population bomb, its wild predictions, the controversy it caused, and what it all means for the way we think about the planet's future. Because while Ehrlich may have been off on some specifics, the question of how many people this Earth can actually support is one we still need to answer. So let's rewind to the 1960s. The world's recovering from World War II, and everyone's focused on growth, bigger populations, booming economies. The more the better, right? But behind the scenes, this guy Paul Ehrlich, he's an entomologist, studies bugs, but he starts getting worried about us humans. He's reading about how the global population is exploding, especially in developing countries. He's seeing the early signs of environmental damage, and he does the math. His conclusion is basically a big, flashing warning sign. We're on a collision course, he figures. More people means we'll run out of everything, food, water, clean air. The planet just can't keep up. So in 1968, he spills all this into a book, The Population Bomb. It's not a boring scientific paper, though. It's full of terrifying quotes, like how hundreds of millions would starve in the next decade. He paints this apocalyptic picture, designed to grab headlines and scare the pants off people. And you know what? It works. The book sells like crazy. Ehrlich's on talk shows and politicians start getting interested. Suddenly, everyone's talking about this population crisis. It sparks the whole environmental movement, leads to groups advocating for family planning, and some really questionable ideas about how to control population growth. We'll get to that mess later. But the big question is, was Ehrlich right about the core problem? Were we headed straight for a global dinner plate with nothing on it? That's where things get interesting, and where his predictions start looking a bit shaky. Okay, let's be honest. The mass famines Ehrlich predicted for the 70s and 80s, thankfully, never happened that way. Sure, there have been terrible localized famines, and hunger is a huge problem for many, but not the apocalyptic food shortage Ehrlich foresaw. So what went wrong in his calculations? Well, first off, he kind of overestimated how fast populations would keep booming. Birth rates did start to slow down, even in developing nations. But even more importantly, Ehrlich didn't account for a little thing called the Green Revolution. This was the jump in agricultural technology, more efficient fertilizers, higher yield crops, better irrigation. Basically, we figured out how to grow way, way more food on the same amount of land. Ehrlich's numbers just couldn't keep up with that kind of innovation. Plus, he sort of painted this picture of resources as static, like the Earth's a pie that only gets sliced smaller and smaller as the population grows. But it turns out, the pie gets bigger sometimes. We've come up with smarter ways to use resources, found replacements for certain materials. Progress tends to surprise you like that. Basically, Ehrlich was looking at a snapshot of the 1960s, saw some alarming trends, and just extrapolated them into the future without accounting for human adaptability. But the thing is, the population bomb wasn't just about inaccurate predictions. It opened up a whole ethical Pandora's box when it came to how we think about population. And sadly, that part had some really ugly consequences. Okay, here's where we need to have a serious talk. Because the fear stoked by Ehrlich's book, while maybe misplaced in some ways, led to some really disturbing proposals and policies around the world. Fueled by the anxieties surrounding population growth, some people started advocating for aggressive population control methods. These methods included forced sterilization, 
tax penalties on large families, and even government-mandated birth limits. These proposals, while stemming from a genuine concern for the planet's future, were a gross violation of individual rights. They often disproportionately targeted the poorest communities, women in developing countries, and marginalized groups. This raises a troubling specter of classism and eugenics, where certain demographics are deemed unfit or undesirable to have children. The ethical debate surrounding population control is complex. Can we justify sacrificing one group's reproductive freedom for what some think is the greater good of the planet? Is there a moral way to even talk about population size in an era where having children is such a personal, fundamental right? It's a conversation that demands nuance, and one that can't be reduced to easy solutions or one-size-fits-all policies. Ehrlich's book may have gotten some of the specifics wrong, but it exposed the raw nerve of this ethical dilemma, a dilemma that continues to challenge us today. But it's important to remember one thing. Even though Ehrlich's doomsday predictions were off, that doesn't mean there's no problem at all. His book, flawed as it was, still shines a harsh light on how we manage resources and raised some uncomfortable truths we can't ignore. Look, Ehrlich wasn't a prophet. He got the timing and some of the specifics all wrong but let's give the guy a little credit. Even if his book was based on shaky predictions, it raised some seriously important questions we're still grappling with today. Questions about how many people this earth can actually support sustainably, about our responsibility to future generations, and how to balance our individual choices with the health of the planet. One crucial lesson is that it's not just about the number of people, it's about how we consume resources. A wealthy country with a smaller population can have a much bigger environmental footprint than a larger country with less wasteful consumption patterns. This means the burden of change can't just fall on developing nations. We in the affluent world need to totally rethink our lifestyles. The other big takeaway is a rejection of doom and gloom. Yes, there are serious environmental challenges, and yes, we need to act urgently. But the population bomb approach, this idea of scaring people into action isn't the best path forward. What we really need are smart solutions. Investing in sustainable agriculture that can still feed a growing population, empowering women and girls through education and access to health care, which naturally leads to lower birth rates, and rethinking our reliance on finite resources. This kind of focus on innovation, equity, and positive change is a far more likely path to success. So, Paul Ehrlich's The Population Bomb may not have been the crystal ball everyone thought it was, but its impact on the conversation surrounding population, resources, and sustainability is undeniable. It shone a light on real problems, even if its solutions were sometimes terrifying. Here's the thing. The future's not pre-written. How we manage our resources, how we choose to live, that's all up to us. We can learn from Ehrlich's mistakes, but we shouldn't dismiss his concerns entirely. Can we strike a balance between respecting individual freedoms and ensuring a sustainable future for all? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Was the population bomb more hype than help? What are some creative solutions to the challenges of resource use and population growth? Like and share this episode if you found it interesting, and let's keep this conversation going. Thanks for listening.